we're out at the land testing out the 1986 Honda CR125. And last video you saw me pick this thing up for $500. Super good deal on a 1986 CR125. And uh, we actually got it running last video. And when we first had it running, it had a super bad bog. So what we did was turn out the air screw to four turns which told us that the pilot was way too rich. We actually decreased the pilot size, and then I was able to turn out the air screw one and a half turns, and that solved our super boggy issue down low, um, and it wouldn't rev out at all. So that was the issue, just a super, super rich pilot jet, and uh, yeah, that was the bogging issue, so it wasn't too bad of a fix. We found out also last video that coolant was mixing with the oil, so we're going to take a look at the water pump area today and check that out and then probably check out some other things. The back rear shock is like gone. It's basically a pogo stick. Let me show you guys. So as you can see, the rear shock is basically junk on it. It's just blown and uh, it's really springy. So going over bumps in the field it basically buck you off <laughs> if you hit a big bump. Basically like a pogo stick. So let's get this thing into the garage and start tearing into it, see what we find. We'll also check compression after the first ride like this, see if it stayed high. If not, we'll tear into the top end and take a look at the piston and rings and kind of go from there. But I didn't see any chunks in the lower end when we changed the oil. So hopefully the, the bottom end here is good. But again, we'll tear into it if we have to. All right, we got this bike back home. Let's quick check compression. Okay. See how this thing's running. See what that compression's at. We were at 150. So we'll see if it went up or down. It is back to being cold now, so. Affected it all. But this thing was ripping pretty good. Pretty brown, isn't it? Looks like it's running pretty decent. A little bit white at the tip there. But it's pretty wet. A compression tester in there. Not quite 150. I would have liked to see 150 after the first ride, but we're at 140. So it could probably use a new top end. On the 125s, I'd like to see at least 150 to 160. A fresh top end will have about 160, so. Yeah. Could probably use a new top end. I think we'll tear it down and just check it over. Check over the reeds, check over everything. Make sure everything's good. But um, I wanna check the engine oil. We just changed out the oil before this ride. I wanna see if it turned milky again. Otherwise, uh, if it didn't, then our water pump seal might be holding up. Looks like a grayish color. It's actually kind of hard to tell.
If anything, it's a really slow leak into the oil, making that milky. It looks almost gray. Hard to tell if that's milky or not. Ooh, look at the coolant. That's really, really white looking. So yeah, oil is definitely mixing with the coolant too. Cause I put green cooling in there and now it's white. So that's interesting. <laughs> that should not be happening. That's yeah, just pure white. All right, no oil in the pipe. saw this before. Oh yeah, look at this. It looks like there's a little corrosion going on in there. But does the corrosion go all the way through? That's the question. Impeller looks really good. No, no fins broken on it. A washer. There you can see the corrosion back in there. You can see it's all jeez. haven't been off in a while, doesn't feel like. They're really on there. Looks like there's one more Allen right there. I think we can get this cover off after that. Set set on here. Ooh. 
the thing is going to be corroded. Coming out. Want to drop anything in here? What well, we might have to take off the, the brake lever. It's getting caught right here. All right, brake lever is off. Let's see if this will come out now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So there. Everything looks pretty good. We're gonna have to look inside here so we have to take off this gear. It looks like there's a little weld right there on here. I don't know what that's for to keep that in place. So far I'm not seeing any cracks in the cover here at all. So that's good. Clutch looks to be pretty decent. Looks like the clutch basket has a couple little nicks in it right there. You can see from where from the clutch plates. Those can just be sanded down. You can see the little grooves in the clutch. There's a little trigger for the for the attack system. Kicker gear looks good. This gear looks good. Nothing looks broken. But, uh, we're gonna take off the clutch. This plate off. So there's going to be a little push rod in there. So it looks like this nut, you can see the washer wasn't crimped over. So there's nothing holding that nut on. Is it loose? Nope, it's not loose, but if that nut did come loose and it spun off, that would be a lot of damage. So that washer should crimp down over that nut and it's not doing that. So good thing we did check this because I don't want that coming loose. It was pretty loose on there. Didn't take a whole lot. So I'm guessing a couple more rides that nut could have came loose. All right, so it looks like there's another washer here. This whole basket should come off. We'll check over all the bearings. A little roller bearing for the clutch feels good. I'm just gonna leave it on there actually. Feels really good. Shifting mechanism looks good. Get this gasket out of there. Let's see if there's any metal chunks. I see a couple metallic flakes. I don't know if there's I don't know if those are metallic flakes or what they are. See those little shiny things in there? What would that be from? That back here came off. Washer behind there. Mm. 
Yeah, you can see it looks like some metal. So something's grinding down. Wonder what that would be. I'm not seeing any imperfections in any of the gears or anything, so we'll see if it's the rod. I don't think it's the rod bearing. I didn't hear any knocking. But we'll take apart the top end too, make sure that's good. There aren't a whole lot of flakes, but there was a little bit, so. I'm a little concerned. Bearings feel good. Everything spins smooth. All right, that, that all checks out. All right, so this is the area by the water pump that could be leaking in. So we are going to take out this little gear. Looks like it's held on by a couple screws right here, a little plate. Oh boy, those look like they're on there. That one came. The other one's a little tough. That one's kind of stripped out already. Hopefully we can get it. Without having to drill it out. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. Barely. That's compressed right there, so it's gonna hold that down. Spring bucket should come out too. And you've got a little bearing, that little bearing feels good. And you've got these little balls in here for the water pump gear. Put that back on there. You can see the shaft is pretty, pretty worn out here. Look at that. It's almost like it got chewed down there. Bunch of big grooves in there. So I think we need a new water pump shaft at a minimum. So let's just take a look in here and see if it came through the case. I'm really hoping the corrosion did not come through the case. Hmm, it might be coming through right there. I see a little pitting. All right, so right here. You see how that gets caught? That screwdriver, there's a couple little pits right there coming in through from the other side. So I think there is like a pinhole size corrosion hole right there. Possibly letting coolant through. It's hard to tell if it goes all the way through the case here. And there's a, just a tiny, tiny one right here too, if you can see that. Right there. I mean, these are like pinholes. But uh, we're gonna take off this bearing and the seals and see what those look like. It's really hard to tell if that comes all the way through. But what you can do is just put a dab of JB Weld on there, just blend that in, and that will never leak again. As long as you drain the coolant when you're not riding it. Because that coolant likes to corrode. I'm guessing this is magnesium case. So it's a very common problem for the Hondas in the 80s. So yeah, you can see that corrosion right here is almost coming through. 
But I've seen way worse than this. This is not bad at all. I think it's almost right there. Yep, one spot's right there. You can see it's pretty deep. Right there. And the other spot is right, right there where it's deep. So what you can also do is just blind that in with JB Weld right here. Just kind of fill that in. Because you, you can't find one of these cases. Um, so you're gonna have to kind of modify it to make it work. But you can blend that in with JB Weld and just really make that nice and flat and that will never leak again. Yeah. Still pretty tight in there, so that was pretty good. Let's see what it looks like on the shaft though. It was pretty tight. I mean, it still grabs pretty good. But as you can see right there, it's pretty loose and that's where it sits. And that spot has a bunch of that pitting and scratches and wear right there. So that's why that wasn't sealing properly to there. No corrosion there. So the ceiling surface looks good. Here's what that seal looks like. Let's see what it looks like on the shaft here. It wasn't horrible, but it's pretty loose. I mean, it's a little loose. Really not that bad though. The bearing. Spins freely. So I'm thinking it's just those pinholes causing that leak. And that's probably why you don't see the oil very milky after riding for like an hour. Because those pinholes probably just leak a little bit of coolant into the oil each time you drive it. At least the surface here is clean. Where that uh, bearing goes and the seal goes, that's what uh, is most important. The other stuff we can easily fix. So I'm happy about that. To find a clutch cover, in better condition than this would be very difficult. All right, I'm curious to see how our little butterfly valve held up here that we made for the attack system. And our butterfly is missing. So it broke right off somehow. I don't know how that's possible. Probably should have used Loctite, but it looks like it's, it's not on there anymore. Oh, so you can see our little design broke right off. So it must not have affected the bike too much. We'll have to red block type that in for next time. That fell right into the oil bucket. Got a loser on there. Really on there. We need a, a deep socket. Oh man. <laughs> that one might bring the stud with it. Jeez. I'm gonna need a uh, breaker bar.
Let's see if we can get this one off here. Ooh. Didn't like it. They strip out the I think I stripped out the socket. Wow. That's not good. Still trying to strip up the socket here. Wow. I've never had that happen before. Stripped it all out. Those were pretty loose. That one is just extremely tight. I'm at the pound that one on. See if we can get that one off. That is not budging. What the heck? Why is that so hard to get? I think I just broke my socket here. Yeah, just stripping out. See if I can get a good grip with it. It's just stripping you. All right, I pounded on a uh, 716 socket. We finally got this thing to budge. Wow, that's crazy. Can't believe that worked. I was on there. Looks like we need a new acorn nut, though. Jeez. Feel the rust coming. Holy cow. All right, head looks good. Head looks really good. My gasket seen better days. Holy cow, that thing's stuck on there. Wow. Let's see what the piston looks like here. Be cool and sit at the top of the piston. Leaked in from when we were doing the head. Oh yeah, piston doesn't look too bad. All right, let's uh, get this carb off and then we can get the cylinder off of here. These are on there too. Wow, man. All right, 
little tap. That came free. There we go. There, that wasn't too bad. Dump that in there. Take a look at the cylinder. It does have an exhaust bridge. You can see right there. Looks good though. No scratches on the cylinder at all. We'll inspect that a little bit later. Check out the piston here. So this one actually has two rings. Oh, and three holes were drilled for the exhaust skirt. That's interesting, usually it's only two. You can see they're not even in a straight line. <laughs> kind of funny. Is the arrow pointing the correct direction? Yeah, it looks to be... Yep, arrow right there, pointing that way. So that's good. We'll have to wipe it off and see what size this thing is, but... Let's see what the rod feels like. Oh, that's nice. No up and down play. Very small side to side. Almost looks like a new crank in there. Looks brand new. Get the clip out. Yep. Alright, pistons off. Roller bearing looks good. Yeah, the rod could not look better. Looks really good. All the surfaces look good. So on the piston it says 1.50 millimeters. So it's 1.5 millimeters overboard, which the stock bore is 54 millimeters. So let's just check it and see. Yeah, and we are in fact 1.5 over. So 55.38 millimeters. So the stock bore is 54 or 1.5 over. So it is bored out quite a bit on this bike. First ring appears to be pretty decent. Um, the ring gap's still a little bigger than I'd like. Let's just see what size it is. Yeah, so it's a little bit bigger than my biggest feeler gauge, which is 0 0.024 inches or 0 0.6 millimeters. So that's definitely big. That's about double the size it should be. Let's try the second ring here. That one's even bigger. So that's probably why I had a little bit lower compression. Yeah, this one's a little bit bigger there. See that ring gap? So, it could use some new rings for sure. I'll probably just order up a new piston for it. Yeah, it's about double the size it should be. Just a little bit bigger than the biggest feeler gauge I have. So definitely on the bigger side for the piston rings. And that's probably why it was like right around 150, 140 for compression. Um, like I said, brand new rebuilt one, it's gonna be 160 plus. So I think that's why it was a little bit lower compression. But good news, the cylinder looks amazing. That looks great. No imperfections on the cylinder at all. Piston was drilled out, so that was good. And uh, it ran just fine with that piston in there, but. I think a fresh rebuilt one is gonna run perfect. We have to get a new rear shock for this as well. Uh, making it softer, harder is not working at all. It does not do anything. So I'm trying to see if it's blown out here. Yeah, it probably either needs a rebuild or something we're gonna have to take a look at that but for sure we need a new shock for sure a new piston and rings 
for sure a new dog. Oh, we wouldn't get rid of Vin, would we? <laughs> Should we sell Vin to pay for the parts? What about that, buddy? Could probably get a pretty penny for you. At least a hundred bucks. <laughs> ah, you're a good dog. And then we need a new water pump seal kit. And then we're gonna have to repair that corrosion in there with some JB Weld. And let that cure. But that's basically it for this bike. Everything else is really good. So we'll probably put a couple hundred bucks into it. And uh, we're gonna have a running and driving bike for under thousand dollars, which is awesome. So I am pumped about that. Pretty decent deal on this one. So thanks for watching guys, thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next video, and until next time, we are out. Where are you looking at?